she's iconic. Um, but there's a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding her death. So we will go into a little bit about her because I know a lot of people know who she is just by seeing her picture, but they might not know like who she was, what you know, she, what she did, and stuff like that. We'll also go into how she died officially, and then the conspiracies. Okay. Um, I also do want to say that I am working on a few more like true crime cases. I have been having some health issues, so it makes it hard for me to kind of do the research and do everything else that I have, like with work and stuff like that, and some of the new restrictions I have centered around my health. So, bear with me, they are coming. I'm a bit of a, of a perfectionist in a way, because I do like to actually know what I'm talking about. Um, so they are coming, okay. I don't want to send any hate or anything to anyone involved in, you know, Marilyn Monroe's life or, you know, anybody surrounding it. Also, these are going to be conspiracies, so they're not proven fact, okay? So I don't want to have anybody out here, like, upset, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get started. If you're new here, I want to welcome you. Give me a chance to check out this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, join us. You know, we're, we're kind of random here. We do true crime. We do lots of different things on this channel. I'm always open for suggestions. All my OGs, I love you so much. I have another winner for my holiday giveaway and they will be listed below in the description box and in the comment section. And if you won, make sure to email me so I can send you your gift card. And tonight's gift card is a Starbucks gift card. Alrighty, let's get started. So we're just going to go a little bit into who Marilyn Monroe was as a person. Marilyn Monroe was an actress, model, and singer, famous for playing comedic, blonde, bombshell characters. She became one of the most popular sex symbols of the 1960s and changed societal attitudes towards sexuality. Born and raised in Los Angeles, I don't know why I said it, Los Angeles. I don't know why I said it like that. Monroe spent most of her childhood in foster homes and an orphanage. She eventually married at age 16. She was working in a factory as part of the war effort during World War II when she met a photographer and began a successful pinup modeling career, which led to short-lived film contracts with 20th Century Fox and Columbia. After a series of minor film roles, she signed a new contract with Fox in the late 1950s. Over the next few years, she became a popular actress with roles in several comedies. She faced a scandal when it was revealed that she has posed for nudes, um, and she became a star. But the story did not damage her career, and instead it resulted in increasing the interest in her films, of course. By 1953, Monroe was one of the most marketable Hollywood stars. She had leading roles, films that focused on her sex appeal and comedies. The same year, her nude images were used as the centerfold on the cover of the first issue of Playboy. She played a significant role in the creation of the creation and management of her public image throughout her career, but she was disappointed when she was beginning to get typecasted by the movie studios. So she got tired of that um, pretty quickly because it was always like these dumb blonde roles and, you know, sexy roles, which that's kind of what started her career. Monroe was able to get a new contract, and she even founded her own film production company. Later that year, Fox awarded her a new contract, which gave her more control and a larger salary. She won a Golden Globe for Best Actress for her work in Some Like It Odd. Her last completed film was the drama The Misfits in 1961. Although she had a lot of success in her life, as you can see with the movies and, you know, different 
aspects, the fame, she had a troubled private life. Her private life began to receive a lot of attention. She struggled with addiction, depression, anxiety. Her marriages failed. She was married to retired baseball star Joe DiMaggio and to playwright Arthur Miller. They were highly publicized divorces and, you know, they didn't end well. On August 4th, 1962, she died at age 36 from an overdose of barbiturates at her home in Los Angeles. Her death was ruled a probable suicide, although several conspiracy theories have proposed in the decades that there was more following or leading up to her death. So, I'm gonna go over because I found an article with the different conspiracy theories. So, there is a lot about Marilyn Monroe that is shocking because um, not only was she like one of the main stars at the time, but she was a huge sex symbol. And at the time, she actually performed for JFK, for the president. And there was a rumor that they had an affair, that she was having an affair with him and his brother. Like there was a bunch of stuff. She sang this very sexy happy birthday song to him. That's where if you guys kind of follow her, you know that the little happy birthday, Mr. President. It was her. It was very sexual and things like that. So it's said that that affair is those affairs, quote unquote, were a huge part of her death as to why she died. So I have the articles here. Let me try to see if I can like place it here so I can still read it because these are not typed up. I just found them online. I kind of ran out of time. Okay. Conspiracy theory number one. The Kennedys did it. Just two and a half months after her famous sultry performance of Happy Birthday, Mr. President, at John F. Kennedy's 45th birthday at Madison Square Garden. Monroe was found dead. Kennedy and his younger brother, U.S. Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, feature heavily in several Monroe murder conspiracies. In 2007, Australian filmmaker Felipe Mora discovered a partially redacted FBI document that suggests Robert Kennedy also said to have had an affair with Monroe, like his more famous brother, may have been complicit in a plot to induce her suicide. Also implicated is Kennedy's then brother-in-law, Radpacker actor Peter Lawford, as the conspiracy's lead, Monroe's psychiatrist, Dr. Ralph Greenson, housekeeper Eunice Mori, and agent Pat Newcomb. The depressive Moreau, who had struggled with drug and alcohol abuse, had been known to seek attention by staging suicide attempts, and the document suggests that she was given the means to do so. The barbiturate um, sectional by the alleged conspirators, but was then left to die. As many theories have, have come forward before the FBI, file infers that alleged plot was carried out to silence Monroe, who had threatened to reveal her affairs with the Kennedy brothers. Monroe was F also thought to have a liability, alleging keeping records of conversations detailing highly confidential government information in her little red book. So this is kind of more towards like she, in a way, was gonna, I guess, bring forward the fact that she was having an affair with our president and, at the time, and his brother. So, that's honestly huge in politics, as you guys know, like, in the United States politics, like, that would break someone, <laughs> like, break a president real quick. So, they're saying that that plot was kind of 
against her to silence her in a way for good. The next conspiracy theory is the Mafia did it. Another sensational Bobby Kennedy th theory materialized with the allegation of a renewed wire tamper. Bernard Spindle, who had bugged Monroe's house, possibly on the orders of crooked union dapper, or sorry, leader, Jimmy Hoofa of Chicago Mafia boss, Sam Gianaka. Despite record, uh, despite recorded sightings of him in LA and entering her house, Kennedy stated he was in San Francisco on the night of Monroe's death, but Spindle claims to have heard Kennedy and Monroe fighting the night with Lawford present, followed by a loud bang thought to be the moment of her death. The recordings were, report, were reportedly seized and destroyed in 1966. Giannacana wanted Monroe, who was thought to have had a relationship with his henchman, Johnny, dead, according to a biographer. Okay. The Don is said to have had Monroe over a barrel after coercing the screen sirens of first Hollywood contract in return for her seduction of powerful men that the mobster wanted to blackmail. So they're saying that this mob boss was using Monroe as like, I guess like bait um, for like blackmail, which they just said, and it just didn't work out, I, I'm assuming. Um, he wanted her dead for whatever reason. Um, and I think it has to do really with the fact that she was involved with the Kennedys, maybe he didn't want her to reveal information about their dealings and things like that. The last conspiracy theory is she knew too much about aliens. One of the nuttier theories is discussed in a new documentary, Acknowledged, uh, Unacknowledged by Conspiracy Theorist Dr. Stephen Greer, who claims Monroe was mortared, mortared murdered by the CIA because she knew the truth about Roswell, Roswell and planned to reveal all in the film Greer produces what he says is a classified CIA memo written just two days before Monroe's death. In the alleged memo that Greer believes refers to the storied Roswell UFO crash in New Mexico in 1945, JFK is said to have had told Monroe he witnessed evidence of things from outer space at a secret air base. So this conspiracy literally... <laughs> it's literally saying that the president told her private information about aliens and that she knew about it. So the CIA um, organized her death. Okay, the, I, I, I don't know if I said that that was the last one. There's actually one more. And this conspiracy theory is always around because people think Tupac is alive and Biggie's alive. So this one is conspiracy number four. She's alive. Fake death theories are a dime a dozen, but when it comes to dead stars, the more iconic they are, the more theories um, come. One main claim, Monroe's death was staged by a psychiatrist, um, Dr. Ralph Kirsten, committed to her mental, but who committed her to a mental institution in New Brunswick, Canada, because of a breakdown she experienced due to threats on her life. John Alexander Baker, author of Marilyn Monroe, Alive in 19... 84 believes Monroe stayed at the institution for 20 years without being recognized before being released. According to the book online, Baker says he picked up a hitchhiker in Nova Scotia in 1984 who claimed to be Marilyn Monroe now, a homeless, frightened, paranoid schizophrenic. She told him of her days as a for former movie star and Baker was taken by her resemblance to Monroe as well as a similarity in her singing voice. Baker admits the woman's mental state would have made the story hard to believe. Uh, so, that 
one is, you know, a little hard to believe, obviously, but she was, like, talking as if she was Marilyn Monroe. So, out of the four conspiracy theories, I personally feel like number one is more probable. I don't want to say our government is corrupt or anything, but I do want to say that if you watch a, a fiction shows like Scandal and stuff like that, or House of Cards, you know that political politicians will do anything to keep things under wraps, and in general, that's, most people believe that politicians, they're, the way they're viewed on the outside matters, because that's how they get votes, that's how they get ahead, so appearance matters, so I can only, I can only imagine, you know, what would have happened if she would have said what she said, you know what I mean? I don't know, you guys tell me your thoughts. So this video was a little bit shorter than usual, but I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that it was relaxing and a little bit, you know, conspiracy, you know, got, got your, your mind thinking. Um, but that's it for this video. I hope that you have a good day, night, evening, whatever you have going on. I love you all so much.